Now, possessing the land and possessing your territory is a daily choice. It is a daily choice. Now, your sin can be forgiven and you have a sin nature. And even if you're operating in the church, many people in the church are not possessing what God wants at the maximum level. They're not walking into the promise because they're holding on to old gods and old things in their heart that they won't dispossess. You've got to love God with all. Many people hold on to old religious structure. They won't go down to the altar and really go after God. They, they won't uh, let God deal with their inside nature. You have to dispossess those things to possess the kingdom. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I'm so excited today. We're talking about territory. Now, the devil wants to move into your territory, out here, your land, your property, stop the blessings of God, stop the promises of God. But see, the ultimate territory that the devil wants to take is you. You're a piece of clay. You're a piece of dirt. You're the temple of the Most High God. He wants to take the territory of your heart. And today, I want to talk to you because here in, um, let me see where I'm at here, in 2 Chronicles 16, Let's go down to verse, um, oh, let's see here. Let's go down to verse 29. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord thy God hath brought, me into, brought thee into the land, which thou go to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing on Mount Gerizim. Now, now this is physical land, but God is saying this about your heart, and I need you to hear me. In the land that you're going to possess, if you're going to go in and take the promises of God, before you enter in with God in everything, there are two mountains that you must face. Two mountains. He goes on, he says, The blessing is upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side of Jordan, by the way, where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne over Gilgal, beside the plains of Morah? For ye shall pass over Jordan to go, to go in to possess the land which the Lord God gives you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments when I, which I set thee before thee. So Mount Gerizim. Now, there's basic principles. You read these words, but you don't know the meanings. Mount Gerizim. So if you're going to go in and possess the land, you have to be willing to dispossess. We've talked about that. And Mount Gerizim means the way of cutting off. The way of blessing is the way of cutting off sin, cutting off spirits, cutting off things within yourself that want to control you and manipulate you. Now, Mount Ebal is the way that is void, bald, barren, or unproductive. In other words, if you go any other way except cutting off sin, cutting off the sin nature, working on you for the rest of your life, you will be unproductive. God cannot work with you. And so here we are, and there's these two mountains. They're walking into the land. The lands are full of enemies. The land is full of demonic spirits, demonic principalities. Of course, in the Old Testament, they were actually inside people that could not be driven out. Um, uh, not unless they drove them out and the angel of the Lord went before them, which is the Spirit of God, went before them to drive this out, to drive it out, okay? And so they went before them to drive it out. But, but you have a choice of which one of these mountains you're going to agree with. A mountain of disbelief, doubt, fear, that's Mount Ebal. Or the mountain of Gerizim. One is on the right. The right hand is, the, is faith and and belief and, and releasing faith in God. The left hand is doubt and unbelief. See, a lot of people don't understand those when they're reading their word. And so um, this is the thing. And on Mount Ebal, there is a curse. And on Mount Gerizim, there is a blessing. If you want the land that you're, you're, you're working into to turn into a curse, you just keep doing it the Ebal way. You want it to be blessed by God, participating with God, you do it the Gerizim way. Now, um, to stand in the blessing. Now, he had certain priests here in Deuteronomy 27, 11 through 25. God had certain priests stand up on Ebal and stand up on the blessing mountain, Gerizim. Now, these priests stood on there, but what is powerful is the meaning of their names. Because the meaning of their names represents what you have to do to stay on that mountain and what you have to do to get off of the mountain of cursing. It's powerful. So, I want to share these with you, okay? Now, um, to break the curse, let's hit that one first. Uh, there was Reuben standing on that mountain, Gad, uh, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. Now, on the mountain of curse, there is something you've got to do with yourself. Yes, you've got to cut all of that off to get the blessing. But their names, okay? To break the curse, you must Reuben, which is see. First, you must see the demon you're struggling with. You must see your sin nature. Second, Gad, you must attack it. You must attack it by praising God, by loving God, by obeying God's principles. The next one, Asher, you've got to learn to walk straight to be happy. You've got to determine you're going to go in at the narrow gate, not the wide gate with all your friends and the world and everything else. The next one, Zebulun, you have to desire to dwell with God. To get off the Mount of Curse, you have to literally have a desire to go with God. You won't come off the curse if you don't. 
Next one, Dan. You must contend and strive. You must contend for the faith. You must strive with God. You must run after God. You must pursue the promise. You must contend with all doubt, unbelief, and sin nature in you, repenting to God. Next one, Naftali. You've got to wrestle with it. So to get off the mountain of cursing, you've got to see your sin, attack your sin, wrestle with your sin, contend and strive with your sin. You've got to overcome it. You've got to walk the statutes of God so you will be made happy and desire to dwell with God. That's to get off the mountain of cursing. Okay? You can rewind this and listen to this again. These are the things you have to do. In our country, they want all the blessings, but nobody wants to deal with the sin nature. Everybody's justifying the sin nature. They don't want to deal with their rebellious, sin-filled nature. I'm telling you right now, all have fallen short of the glory of God, but that doesn't mean we put on Jesus' righteousness and we get up and we begin to take the land little by little. We begin to possess it, and we are that land. We are growing in the promise. Ah, uh, watch these clips from the next capital. I'll be right back. This Vermont capital has to be one of the most um, ornate in all of the 50 states. Uh, uh, it's beautiful. The people here are very friendly and uh, very nice. And this state was founded on certain principles. You know, the, uh, one of the presidents from this state was Calvin Coolidge, one of the last constitutional presidents that we had uh, that understood individual freedom. There's been so many plays on words um, because early on, liberty uh, eventually uh, uh, was known that we were different than other nations. All the other nations were socialistic and uh, communistic and they looked for the government to be God. America was different. We were free men looking to God to guide the free men and the government to serve the people that were guided by God. And now everything is flip-flopping. I want to pray for this Senate right here. The men that will sit in the seats of this state, will they push back the federal beast? Will they go back to individual freedoms and taking a man one at a time. Now I know that there are many uh, conditions in this nation that we want to uh, form groups. Unions came as immigrants came. They formed unions uh, like the same socialistic countries they came from instead of understanding individual freedom individualism. Heavenly Father, I ask God you would hold every senator as an individual, with individual morality, with the individual rights, God, with the individual voice. God, that you would hold individuals accountable across this nation, God. I ask God that socialism would be pushed back and communism. I ask God that the beast would be pushed back and revival would come to the hearts of men. True freedom would come, God. Freedom for property, freedom for individual speech, freedom for individual thought, and ultimately freedom for an individual relationship with Jesus. Jesus Christ, God, through the word of God that sets men free and our unity is based in the spirit of God and the Bible. Well, you're going to take your land. Are you going to step into your promise? Well, not without getting off the mountain of cursing. Ebal is a curse. It is bald. It's barren. It's unproductive. The ways of the world are unproductive. What do you have to do? I'm going to hit it again. You've got to see your sin, which it, this is the priests that were standing on these mountains and what their names meant. Reuben, you've got to see your sin. Gad, you've got to attack your sin, attack your enemy. Um, Zebulun, you've got to desire to dwell with God. Dan, you've got to contend and strive for the faith. You've got to reach out for it. Naphtali, you've got to wrestle with that sin nature for the rest of your life. And guess what? You've got to walk straight to be happy. Well, I wish you'd become my partner. I wish you would join in these teachings. I wish you'd go to ferventfire.com and send us an email telling them that you want the teachings on, um, on the territory. We can send those to your email for free. If you want the actual teaching, send in a love gift. I think right now there's four sermons on this. You can get it. $4 a piece, 16, put territory on there. We'll send it to you. Okay, or we can send it your email for free. I'd still need love offerings. I need people. I celebrate your support because we are celebrating the gospel message and what God is doing in our nation. I love you. I'll see you next time.